Lots of buzz in the world these days about artificial intelligence or AI. And I've talked about it in the past regarding music composition and sync music, things of that sort. Uh, and I consider it a threat. Uh, it will take some low hanging fruit jobs away. I think it absolutely will. And I've always said uh, we should learn how to use AI tools as tools uh, to help us find more revenue instead of being replaced by these tools. But I wanted to figure out how it learns, how AI learns music. Um, because if you listen to existing examples of AI, there's the occasional good example, but most of it sounds bad. But is it because the, the concept is bad or is it just hasn't learned enough yet? I mean, when, when you first started playing your chosen instrument, you didn't sound good right from the beginning, unless you're a prodigy. Uh, it took time to learn. The same thing applies to computer technology. Computer graphics long ago were a lot less uh, detailed and realistic than they are today. The same thing with computer voices. They've gotten a whole lot better over time. The same thing will happen with computer generated music. Now, computer generated music has been around a very, very long time, decades actually. Uh, but now we're talking about creating music just based on verbal or word text descriptions. Um, and, and that's different than creating music using computers, using your digital audio workstation, uh, using samples. Having computers create sonic files that sound like music just by being prompted with text is a very incredible thing. It's a very abstract thing. So I'm going to talk about that in a bit. Uh, music LM is that very tool. You give it a text description and it gives you music back after a few seconds. But I first wanted to understand how was music LM trained? Because the initial examples I heard a while back were kind of meh, you know? So um, let's figure out how did it learn? And it might explain a few things. So if you look at this paper, this exciting paper, an ontology and human labeled data set for audio events. Um, it, it's, it's dry read, but it tells you how it's trained AI. So I scroll down a bit, a few pages, it starts talking about uh, how it used YouTube videos, uh, short excerpts of YouTube videos, and played that for the artificial intelligence engine. Now I found it interesting that they used 10 second segments from thousands of videos. So they just grabbed, based on keyword descriptions and, and, and metadata, etc., they grabbed videos that are public and analyzed uh, 10 second snippets. Now, these 10 second snippets were all given textual descriptions uh, by actual musicians. So if we go to the Musical Caps uh, data set at Kaggle, you've got this data set. Uh, and, and here's examples. This little number right here is the actual uh, video identifier at YouTube. And then you can see some aspects. There's some words in here, low quality, sustained strings, soft female vocal. And then there's a textual, uh, a, a caption that was provided by um, a, a musician. So I actually went and got the data set and it looks like this. And so you can see the, the video links here or the video identifier here. And then this particular video here is uh, the, the aspect list. This is backing track, jazz, digital drums. But I can scroll to the right and see the actual description that a musician gave about this. And this is the text that Music LM, uh, the AI engine, is learning from. The song contains digital drums playing a simple groove along with two guitars, one strumming chords along with a snare, the other one playing a melody on top. And it goes on to describe this particular 10 second music snippet. Now that sounds good, that sounds smart. Get musicians to describe what they hear. But then I wanted to dive into the actual videos that they use. And so you can see that data set. You can go to the audio set and see the actual videos that were used. Those identifiers in the previous screen, these are the actual video sets. And it was, it was quite interesting. So looking at the top left here, how much data was uh, analyzed? Overall, over a million videos of music were analyzed, being listened to by the AI engine. And that was a total of 2,801.8 hours. Where does that number come from? You take your 1.011 million videos times 10 seconds. That gives you 10 million seconds. Divide that by 60 for minutes. Divide it again by 60 for hours. You get 2,800 hours that were analyzed. Uh, of those, they grabbed 5,695 to analyze specifically for music with over 15 hours of analysis conducted there. Here are the videos that they, they used to analyze music. So this subset of 5,695 videos is the basis, the musical foundation, the musical instruction that Google Music LM used to create music. So when you dig into the actual data set, 
There's all sorts of categories and they have a quality rating. So I'm going to stick with the good quality stuff here, but I can search for a, a typical sound. So what am I going to search for? Of course, saxophone. That's me. That's what I do. It's my primary instrument. So let's click on that. These are the 62 uh, videos that were evaluated to learn to teach uh, Music LM what a saxophone is. So that's cool. That's fair. I see saxophone pictures here. Let's view all 62 videos. This is where you start getting in the quirkiness of analytics and, and random videos and things of that sort. So again, this study is based on random 10 second snippets of music based on category and keywords that live musicians listen to and described. And then they feed that to the AI learning engine and it listens to 10 seconds and says, oh, this is this noise I just ingested matches the words that this musician described. Great, makes sense. But when you click on the links, you get the actual 10 second clip and you start seeing the first problem in training. So let's go here. There's Dexter Gordon. Let's go click on Dexter Gordon. Days of Wine and Roses, Dexter Gordon. This is a saxophone video and I click on play. It'll give me a 10 second clip. And this is the, what an AI is supposed to learn about the saxophone. <music> And it stops. There was zero saxophone in that video. Okay, so that's not a good video to teach a saxophone instrument sound. Let's click on this gun. This is a saxophone guy. Let's see what we got here. Let's hit play for the 10 seconds. Okay, that was a saxophone. It had a backing track behind it, but it was a saxophone, so that's more useful. Let's click on something different. Oh, here's a very famous guy here. Okay, yeah, that's a baritone saxophone uh, with drums in a subway in New York. So you start seeing what I mean here. You, you, you have music, but it's got other sounds around it. Let me just click on, I don't know, let's look at what we got here. Who's this guy? That's not a saxophone, it's a bass clarinet. <laughs> Very talented player, but that is not a saxophone, that is a bass clarinet. Big difference. Let's see what we got here. Okay, that last second was a good clip because it was a saxophone, but there is a, a whole rhythm section there. So how, if I'm AI, am I supposed to learn what a saxophone is when I've got all this extraneous noise, sometimes inaccurate noise? Let's scroll down here. Oh, wait, I see a fantastic album from a legend. This is Charlie Parker, alto saxophone strings. Classic recording of Summertime, Charlie Parker with strings. But... Again, saxophone with strings. So and then you wonder why does AI generated saxophone not sound like a saxophone? Because the tool is learning all these other noises and being told this is a saxophone. Uh, ideally, you'd want nothing but pure saxophone, solo saxophone to be trained, the full range of the horn. And be specific, alto saxophone, tenor saxophone, soprano saxophone, baritone saxophone, saxophone ensembles, saxophone with rhythm section, saxophone with jazz rhythm section, saxophone with, with rock, group you know um but that's not really what's happening so again we're at the very early stages of music ai training etc but i think right away i see where you can definitely improve the training model by improving the examples you feed it garbage in garbage out it's a very common axiom in the technology world i think in a lot of cases there's a lot of garbage going in That's not a saxophone at all. That's a brass instrument. It was a Stan Getz clip, but not. Here's a saxophone clip, but it's got a guitar. And what's we got here? Okay, good saxophone, again, with a rock group. You see where I'm going with this? So let's go back and look at some other instruments here. Let's find a different instrument to, to click on. Let's look for, uh, let's look for guitar. 
What do we got here? 125 videos for all of 0 0.3 hours analyzed. So what do we got here? Let's click on a guy. <laughs> Yeah, that's rack guitar right there. We got here. Last stuff here. Let's look at this one here. Look down at the bottom, it's got these labels attached to it. reverberation, electric guitar, guitar. The word that jumped out for me was tremolo. That was a tremolo guitar, and there was no tremolo word used there. So, again, a student is only as good as the teacher. Oh, and that's not an absolute truth, but um, it's all about giving good data. What do we got here for this? <laughs> Now what's wild is that these videos, like if I click on a video on YouTube, so what's wild about this is that this is truly random. This guy has 24 subscribers in his videos from 15 years ago. So it truly is a, a random gathering. I mean, it's a methodology. It's a way to to uh, to learn. But man, it's, it's, it's just kind of strange to me that that's, that's how it's learning. But you got to start somewhere, right? I guess you get funding and you, well, hell, Google's got all the money in the world. You can do it at once. Um, what am I saying here? I'm saying that the, the, the tool is only going to be good as the ingredients. The cake is only as good as the ingredients you put in it, right? So this is kind of random. Um, looking back at the uh, the uh, descriptions here, or the big data set here, you know, you've got these descriptions, all these descriptions that the AI tool is learning. All this is just me setting up the idea that Music LM has been taught how music based on a certain data set, and it might not be the greatest data set, but it's still an incredibly cool technology. All right, so let's dive into Music LM. This is the, the AI test kitchen dot with Google dot com. Uh, this is Google's musical AI tool, Music LM. So let's give it a try. Let's take a look and see what this thing actually can do. The concept is you just give it some text and it will create music based on your text. Now think about that for a second. We're not saying, you know, we're not writing a composition. Uh, we're just telling it, based on these words, give us music that the words inspire or, or want you to generate. So let's try it. Be descriptive. Electrical or classical sounds best. Mention the vibe, mood, or emotion you want to create. Uh, you can't mention certain artists or queries. That's fine. And then you want you to give a thumbs up or thumbs down. So I got it. Fine. Be descriptive. Electronic or classical sounds best. I guess that's based on the training data. So, what do I want to create? EDM club music with a big kick drum and high intensity synthesizers. Synthesizers. Did I spell that right? Let's see what we get here. And that's real time, I'm not speeding things up. Well, it's got the kick drum. Certainly not what I had in my brain. <laughs> but still, example number two. I think that number two is the winner here. Very interesting. Not I was thinking, you know, Aoki, you know, type stuff. Big fat synth. Let me try. Let's change this again here. EDM music inspired by Aoki. Let's see if it if it recognizes the artist. Okay, this sounds more like music I was looking for. It's 
случае. That's that's not bad. Okay, I didn't take the snare this time, but Inter interesting stuff. So, if you think about the purpose or the use case for this stuff, if you're watching a soap opera, you're watching some club scene, and you had something in the background, you weren't focusing on it, that would certainly suffice in the background. Let's change categories. Let's go to a solo classical piano romantic period quiet dinner music. This is something I play, so let's see how it does. Kind of random, kind of lo-fi. Okay, this sounds like a retro recording from the 20s or 30s or something. Uh, it, it bounces around a bit, but again, this is just, that was five seconds. Uh, and this is early technology stuff here. Let me, uh, let's do a certain mood. Let's do a somber mood for a funeral. Simple slow acoustic, because that's that's too cheery. Okay, it's nice little music, but it's not somber. It's major. That's minor key. something different here let's just stop that let's go for a southern fried rock let's just go for that no descriptors other than the category you can kind of like hear background noise in there Okay, think about that. <laughs> Sounds like an outdoor festival from a bad VHS tape. But think about it. I just gave it a category and it randomly, or not randomly, it generated brand new, never before heard music. Uh, the proper instrumentation, the drums and the bass and the guitar and but there's crowd noise or whatever in the background as well. But I mean, just for three words to generate that, again, it's not fantastic music, but it's accurate for the most part. Uh, let's try something different here. Let's try um, modal jazz saxophone.
I'm thinking Coltrane, you know. <laughs> I've heard this crap in clubs in the yard before. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Totally heard this at clubs. Point short a little bit, that kills me. So, again, think about this you're watching TV, and there's a bunch of hipsters talking about some stuff at a club, and this is really way down in the mix. This is totally, totally fine for acceptable background music. Rock guitar solo with banging drum beat. <laughs> Okay, there's more than drums in the hi hat. <laughs> Walk to any commercial studio any major city and you'll hear that noise that's hysterical uh, they, they made me laugh I'm gonna give number two that one now okay let's go for something different let's go for uh, droning tension underscore suitable for an investigative crime scene <laughs> In there. It's like a car just crashed into it or something. Maybe the the other words I added are confusing it. Let's just try this by itself. Droning tension. Let's try this. Tension drone. It's weird how it wouldn't do droning tension. It's like a dark reggae nightmare. So far, so good. Okay, that's back to back. Reggae, I guess drone has to do with reggae in its mind. Let's try something. Let's try something like this. Um, relaxing uh, Afrobeat. Yeah. So again, I, I'm not helping the tool at all. Two words is not a lot. Let's take this big example I just kind of threw at me and see what it gives us. Rising fifth, playing arpeggio, lots of reverb, back by pads. This got really specific. Let's see what it gives us. Quality is much better because it's 
gave a whole lot more information. So what we've got here, we've got, it describes a synth, and effects, pads, bass line, lots of sounds, and so it describes the instruments, and then it talks about where we used. Okay, so let's try something new here. A relaxing uh, jazz quartet with a tenor saxophone playing romantic melodies over an acoustic bass and a grand piano uh, drum drums are using brushes and symbol light symbols this would be heard during dinner at a fancy restaurant okay I painted a picture let's see what we got here saxophone got the drums right Interesting. Not close to what I had in my head, but still interesting what it created. Let's try something entirely different. Soulful funk from the 1970s with a funky bass groove over funky drums and wah guitar. A horn section is playing short stabs. I'm thinking James Brown, 70s, but let's see what it thinks. Okay, that's funky. Hey! <laughs> no horns, but it's still pretty funny. That would be a fun sample. You could use, I could sample that and have fun with that. Maybe I found a genre I like there. Let's see if I can do it be more specific. Um, seriously funky synth music in the style of Parliament. Let's see uh, if it lets me do that. Oh, it's doing it. I find a niche that works. Okay, I like this. I gotta admit. <laughs> that's weirdly enjoyable oh my goodness let's try okay let's try let's get if we're gonna get into some soulful stuff here uh, let's go into some 90s style uh, hip-hop beat let's just go with that that's pretty descriptive Huh. 
This is all stuff that you could easily use as samples for filler and beats today. Let's say, let's see if we can do this uh, Wu-Tang style hip hop beat. I don't know if it'll let me do it or not. Let's see. Nope, can't do that. Too specific to an artist. Uh, let's slide, let's do this 80s style hip hop beat. Going back to my generation. Track two. I mean, that's 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 cool stuff. Let's try it. Let's just change decades. So let's go uh, 50s style rockabilly guitar. So I'm just giving giving. It synth punk beat with energetic drums and a silly male vocal. Let's try that. What are we going to get for vocals? I haven't done any vocals yet. I wouldn't call that punk beat. There's no male vocal either. some more examples to learn from there. 60s style psychedelic guitar rock. It's kind of like a Doors 5 here. Final tap at the Air Force Base. So I don't know about that. Let's try totally nailed that. Hip-hop beat from the 2000s. Interesting. I'm not a whole lot. Let's try something else. Let's try a uh, classic country music from the 1940s with guitar and fiddle. It's not a violin, it's a fiddle. fiddle. Interesting. Let's try this. Um, mariachi music featuring trumpets and a male vocalist. I could go on for hours. Woo! I 
I could be eating lunch at a nice mom and pop Mexican place in San Antonio right now. More salsa, please. That works for me. Okay, I think I've had enough fun. So just remember that we are in the very early stages of this. This tool just came out the past month. The technology itself is new. Like I said, look at what computer graphics look like today. They're almost realistic versus what it was 30 years ago. Um, and, and technology just gets faster and faster. Um, so it's only going to get better the more that it learns and the more that it gets access to better training data, uh, the better it will get. As a musician, do I want it to get better? Not really, but I also am a technology guy and I appreciate what it can do. And again, if you learn to use technology as a tool and you remain the master of that tool versus being mastered by the tool or replaced by the tool, that's the goal. So make yourself relevant, stay current. Uh, use these tools, learn these tools so that you can be the middleman for your clients. So they're calling you to use these things versus doing it themselves and replacing you. Anyway, this is kind of a random, strange video. No music creation for me. I just wanted to show you my first test drive. Literally, that was my first time walking through LM, a music LM, uh, the Google tool. Uh, so you saw exactly what I saw the very first time. I did, not, I did not preview it before making this video. Hopefully that was interesting. Um, I'll get back to doing some more music creation videos, but I wanted to share this AI thing with you. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll talk to you in the next time. Thanks for watching.